Today we're driving the 2024 Defender 130 Outbound. This is the Land Rover Defender that is designed for overlanders, for adventurers. It does away with the third row. We only get a two row SUV in the long, long Defender. And that's so that you can fold down that second row, sleep in the back of this thing, put a bunch of gear, refrigerators, tool kits, uh, recovery equipment, and go on adventures in this thing. Let's walk you around this, we'll talk about what it's been like to live with this week. I think this is probably one of the most badass looking Defenders we've had yet. I love this blacked out interior. Oh, it's cool. This Defender 130 outbound is powered by a three liter inline six. That's supercharged and has a mild hybrid system. It makes 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. We have an eight speed automatic, all wheel drive with a transfer case. We have a locking center and rear differential. We have some storage bins, or a storage bin on this passenger side, and a ladder on the driver's side. How cool is that? So you can get up onto whatever you need to access on the roof of this Defender. Look at that. Folds down like so. Let's see, is there a weight limit? Should be pretty good. 150 kilograms. I am 150 pounds, so we should be in pretty good shape. That's easy. Very good. Put your bikes up here, uh, a rooftop tent, whatever you need. I love it. Easy. And you could lock that as well. This is also equipped with a towing kit, so it can tow up to 8,200 pounds. Starting price on the Defender 130 outbound is just shy of 86 grand. Spec with a few options, a little over $93,000 here. Rides on air suspension, so you can get a lot of ride height out of this. Good approach, departure, and breakover angles. We're on a set of Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires, 255 60R20s. Great big meaty boys that should get you through the trails. Mud, dirt, sand. Headed in the snow this morning. It wasn't amazing in the snow and the ice, but this is a harder tire compound. Recovery points back here too. And here's a look at that storage space. For some reason, manufacturers think overlanders don't need a third rose. And I can see that they may have a point, but in something this big, it is really nice. And to be honest, the third row was my favorite thing about the Defender 130, at least the last one that we drove. It was super usable, a lot of room, and this does away with it. So you can see on the back of the second row seats, those all fold down beautifully. Uh, you can fold those all down, put gear in here, sleep back here. I've got some photo equipment in the back of this from a photo shoot earlier today. This is a five foot background and it fits beautifully in here. Let's take a look at this lockable storage bin here. A little bit of space, it locks in the upright position, and it'll automatically lock when you close it. There we go, let's see if we can get this. There we go, you just gotta put your back into it. <laughs> this is painted in Carpathian Gray, which is a fantastic color on this Defender 130. Love the way this thing looks. Everything is blacked out, grayed out. It looks really sharp. I've got to say, to drive and to live with and to use, the Defender 130 is probably my favorite Defender. Yes, the 110 is a little bit smaller and the 90 is this little short boy, but this is pretty cool. It's very versatile, very practical, and I think it looks good. All right, so to fold down the second row, just pull this lever and it'll fold nice and flat. And you've got this rubber lined back space to keep it from getting scratched up. And then you can also move this forward. But since we don't have a third row, we don't really need to do that. You get cup holders, you even get a second little moonroof back there. The windows look like they're still there, but of course they just kind of have block off panels that are painted here. So this is a little bit darker of an interior in this Defender 130. Very comfortable in the second row. I'm five foot ten. This is my driving position. We've got climate control back here, a nice big panoramic moonroof, 
digital rear view mirror. Let's you see around that spare tire pretty well. And just a fantastic looking interior. Good amount of storage, love the design. Infotainment works pretty well on this. The tech in here is nicely integrated and uh, this is an easy SUV to live with. This is rated for 17 miles to the gallon combined. I'm not sure with these off-road tires if you'd actually average that, especially if you're putting stuff on the roof. You've got overlanding gear to boot. There's a three liter supercharged hybrid, mild hybrid in line six. Nice sounding engine paired great with this eight speed automatic from ZF. Puts the power down well, sounds pretty good. And according to the EPA rating, it's reasonably efficient for what this is. Let's see what this looks like lifted up on the air suspension. See it raising one axle at a time there. <laughs> that is pretty good. <laughs> Even with this extra overhang, still a pretty good departure angle. You've got this cutoff for the rear exhaust so that it doesn't get hit by the ground when you're going up big inclines. And of course, you can also slam this down and access height mode. You can have it default to slam down every time you put it in park or you could just have it in whatever mode you've left it. I think you could drive up to 30 miles an hour in the highest setting. We have some pretty clever controls here by default. This is your temperature selector here. So you just turn this dial and you can change your temperature. Press this, you can change your fan speed or leave it in auto. And if you press that button with a little terrain switch or terrain icon, this can select all of your different drive modes. So we get eco, comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud, rut, sand, rock crawl, wade, and a configurable setting. We'll just leave it in comfort today because this is mostly gonna be a street drive. This Defender will pretty much figure out everything that you need to do with the ride height, the differentials, the traction control systems for each intended terrain, which is pretty clever. Lots of settings, lots of things that you can look at, information, displays, uh, there's an off-road page app in here. see what your wheels, suspension, differentials are doing, weighting info, terrain response, quick access to cameras is always a constant icon here to the right, which is really nice. Even if you're in CarPlay or Android Auto, you can access your parking cameras very quickly, very easily, which I love to see. And you can select between a bunch of different settings for that. There are off-road cameras, on-road cameras, towing cameras, wonderful, love that. Easy to see everything there. CarPlay, Android Auto are both wireless, pretty responsive screen, a little bit of lag to everything in this Defender, but it's, uh, it's livable, definitely livable. Cup holders, lots of storage down here. Everything's lined with rubber on the bottom so it doesn't slide around. Wireless charging, a little bit of a cool box in here. Here's our window sticker. 93,788 total price. Off-road pack is 1850. That includes electronic active differential with torque vector ring by braking. And we get some plug sockets in the back. All right, without any more delay, let's go take this for a drive and we'll see how it does. From behind the wheel, it doesn't really drive any differently from the Defender 130 that we drove in our last video. These Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires don't make a ton of noise. It's a good off-road compound. A little bit hard for snow driving, but it should do pretty well in deep snow. 
on ice and light hard pack snow though, they do not have a lot of traction out here. They do well in the wet though, better than something like a KO2. And they just look proper. This inline six is so smooth. We get a sport mode for the transmission. No paddle shifters. But quick shifts and good power here. Very light steering. A very isolating driving experience here. Driving this Defender 130 is kind of the equivalent of getting an injection of anesthesia. You just don't feel anything from outside. You are completely isolated and separate from the outside world. It's very comfortable, very quiet, very luxurious, but I wouldn't mind just a little bit more feedback from the steering rack. Ride quality is excellent. We'll go on to some uh, dirt roads here for a minute. mud with a little bit of snow. This feels pretty good. Good braking performance. There's a bit of a delay to your initial steering. Again, just not a lot of feedback from that front end. Ride quality is so comfortable though. Gotta love this air suspension for its versatility, its comfort. Putting it in access height when you need to load this up or get people in this Defender is really nice. My only major complaint with this 130 outbound is just that the ladder and the side panel really impedes your rearward visibility if you use your mirrors and you aim them close to the vehicle. You can get this digital rear view mirror going and that gives you a pretty good view out of the back and I can even see reasonably well out of the uh, regular mirror but if you want to look at behind you in your side mirrors you can't really see a whole lot in this. Good power, good torque, smooth, comfortable. I mean, as you would expect from an almost $100,000 JLR product, this thing's awesome to drive. You do have to kind of recalibrate your brain for the softness of this vehicle's inputs, but again, you get used to it, and uh, I've really started to enjoy it this week. stop start because this is a mild hybrid it's completely seamless the revs just rise up from zero seats are comfortable lots of tilting and telescoping adjustment with the steering wheel adjusters to the right it's a heated steering wheel, heated and ventilated seats, which you can control by pushing your button in there. It's not doing it right now, but one thing that's been a little bit strange this week is the gauge cluster illumination has been a little bit dark. Um, and I have a feeling that's because this is a really a dark interior and that sensor is positioned in a place where it doesn't quite read the ambient lighting as well as it should. I haven't really found a place to manually adjust the gauge cluster. You can adjust the screen brightness very easily in the settings menu, and that does a pretty good job doing its own thing automatically. But the gauge cluster has been a little bit on the darker side for my taste this week.
there was a little bit of a howl from these Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax, but for the most part, you don't even notice them in this Defender. Get up to speed, very quiet on the highway. We get adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, a speed limiter. That's pretty clever. You can choose between adaptive cruise and that speed limiter with your throttle. A sport mode in this. I think that would be nice if you're carving through some back roads, some twisty mountain roads, stiffening up the suspension would help a little bit with this Defender 130's handling. There's quite a bit of body roll. power here though. JLR just calls this lane assistance, and it's just going to bounce us off the lines. You can easily turn that off by holding the button right there. Like these steering wheel controls, they're easily defined. They're kind of rubberized plastic. They feel nice in hand. I've got to say, all the buttons and switch gear in here feel really nice. And even though some of these chunky looking materials looked a little bit cheaper when this thing first came out, I think they've done a nice job. They feel really solid. This material feels pretty good here too. Got good speaker grills, black headliner, looks nice. And all the blacked out bits in this Defender 130 outbound, I think look proper. Even these seats feel pretty nice. Seventy-five miles an hour. It's quiet. No complaints with road noise. This Defender 130 still is reasonably narrow to get through tighter trails. Yes, it's longer, and that's gonna reduce your overlanding ability some with rock crawling, but overall, this thing should be so capable. You really won't have to worry about too much. And the extra cargo carrying capacity of this might be worth it to some who wanna go on some adventures. From the factory, this thing pretty much has all the off-road capability you would need. You just gotta be careful when you outfit it with all your gear, you don't put too much weight into it. Brakes feel decent, nice firm pedal. They don't let you forget that you're bringing down a big heavy SUV from speed, but they seem to have a decent bite. I mentioned it earlier, but I am impressed with how these Wrangler Duratrax do in the wet. We're just cruising here. Let's do a quick sound system test. 
We've got a volume knob here to the right, easy access for the passenger, and of course a volume slider here on the steering wheel on the left. blown away by this Meridian sound system, but it's acceptable. I think, uh, you know, nothing class leading here, but it's, it's all right for the price point. I do like, even though our rear window is absolutely filthy and that the car is filthy right now, I still have a great view out of this digital rear view camera. All right, one more entrance ramp. Love this shifter positioning. It is that Lotus hands width from the steering wheel. Push forward to downshift, pull back to upshift, just like it should be. Not pushing it too hard since it's wet today, but it has the grip. This Defender just massages over every road imperfection. Really pretty comfortable vehicle to drive in Michigan this time of year. That rear diff doing a great job putting its power down. Really locks nicely. All right, guys, so some final thoughts on the Defender 130 outbound. If you want a vehicle this size, if you want the big Defender and you can do without a third row, this is a pretty cool option, especially for overlanding, some adventure. Personally, I would use the third row enough for it to be worth it. So I would probably go with a different spec, a different trim, but uh, it would be nice if Land Rover maybe offered it as an option or you could get some of the other bits and bobs, I'm sure as accessories, uh, and kind of piecemeal your Defender 130 together, your perfect Defender 130. But this is a cool package and a cool trim, and it's neat to see Land Rover making some uh, kind of more overlanding special specs for their customers. Uh, out of the gate, this is a pretty awesome package. It looks great, it performs well, it should do all the off-road things that you need, and uh, you can just kind of take it from there with your build. Unfortunately, we did not get the chance to take this off-road this week. One of these days, we'll take one of these Defenders off-road, but uh, from the minimal off-roading we have done with them, they are just hugely capable. I said JLR and it got excited. And it looks like Substitute Topher has arrived in an Ionic 6. 
will air down or air out the suspension. I'll show you guys what this looks like slammed too. Okay, that's gonna be a wrap. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Christopher. Good morning. What do you think? I like that it slammed itself for you to get out uh, comfortably. Yes. Yeah, that's a setting you can have it do automatically or you can just do it on your own. Yeah. Gray cars for a gray day. That's right. Yeah. Did you use the ladder today? I did use the ladder. It is awesome. Look at this. It says it's rated for 150 kilograms, which is... I, I thought you were going to say pounds. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm 150 pounds. So yeah, it looks a little bit flimsy, but it's, once you get up there, it's fine. Yeah, I Can mean, you, sit up there? you could sit up here, you could party up here, you could have a, a bike rack, a rooftop tent. I mean, this is this is a great feature. It's better than slipping off the tire or something. That's great. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty sweet. And then on the other side, we have um, a box that is kind of difficult to open and difficult to close. <laughs> in the box nothing oh. space the final frontier i think no one's ever even used this yet so the key is a little bit wonky there we go oh, there's a net there's a net i don't know what you'd want to put in here there's tons of room inside the vehicle to put things right it makes it so you can't really see around your mirror up front okay but it is clever and i guess if you wanted to like put some jerry cans or extra fuel here you could it's got nice land rover badging you just have to really like aggressively close it. yeah there we go okay, that's good premium gasoline only it is it looks great i like the wheels i like the tires in this color carpathian gray the inside's all blacked out too that's cool mm-hmm so, yeah. All right, well, Chris and I are going to discuss things and swap vehicles. Mm -hmm. His turn in the Defender and my turn in the Ionic. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Go take, go check out Topher Drives. Thanks. Yeah, you, you got a shout-out, and you didn't even do anything know, in the video. Just you just showed up. up here randomly in a parking lot. Gosh. <laughs> All right, see you guys.